Here's some strategies for dealing with our four brain characters. If you're feeling negative or down, you can be sure your number one and number two brains are active. If you're feeling happy and joyful, then it's number three and number four that are working. So what do we do with this knowledge now that we know which parts of our brain produces what feelings? Well, first we need to recognize what our feeling is in the moment and then connect that to which part of the brain it comes from. Are you feeling the need to control things? Do you have to have everything be just perfect? Do you need to struggle to get what you want? Is there something you're resisting? Then you can be sure your number one brain is active. Are you having uncontrollable thoughts pop up into your awareness? Fearful thoughts about bad things that might happen? Or just random thoughts about things that happened in the past? Having any obsessive ruminations that just can't be stopped? And you can be sure your number two brain is active in the moment. At its worst, it could produce irrational anxiety. Feeling overwhelmed or hopeless, and that you just have to take some action to solve a problem? Or are you acting just on vague feelings? Are you offended by things? Are you trying to find some temporary fix to get a dose of happiness? then this is your number one brain being influenced by your number two. And trying to fix any of these imaginary issues is like a wild goose chase that never ends. It's like plummeting into a never-ending rabbit hole that you do not want to go down. Number one always wants to be right rather than to be happy. And it will fight to be right. It uses that justification to keep fighting. Number one wants to be the one that's always in control. It wants to focus on every single little detail that it sees as reality. It's important to realize that our number one and number two brains are not the bad guys. They're just doing what they're designed to do so that we can successfully interact with this slow energy world that's in our faces all the time. Life is always throwing us curveballs that we don't see coming. There are many, many issues in our lives that trip us up and knock us off our spiritual path. And if you're struggling with them, then you're just using half of your brain to try and live with. Don't use the left side of your brain to try and solve every issue. You need to surrender and let the rest of your brain do its thing. The tyranny of the left side of the brain must be transcended. It's important to learn how to consciously recognize when it's active and to be able to step in and make a new conscious choice of which part of your brain to use. Appreciate the help from number one and two. Try to soothe them. Praise them for doing their jobs well. Talk to them like little children. Explain that while you love them, they can't run the whole show by themselves. They need to step back and let other parts of the brain do their thing. Tell number one, it's okay to take time off and let number three go out and have fun and act silly. Tell the number two brain that you've heard its alarm signals, its warnings. You've recognized them. You thank it for keeping you safe, but tell it, to move into the background of your consciousness rather than the foreground. So you can give your attention to the other parts of your brain. The optimal functioning for all four parts of the brain is to let number three and four call upon and motivate number one to solve problems when needed. This is best exemplified by the saying, do what you love and your number one brain will knock itself out to make it happen. The ideal way to use our brains is for number three and number four to work together. Then you're in the sweet spot of feeling joy and happiness and feeling joy for all things. Number one is put into standby mode, waiting for instructions from number three and number four. 
It's there to help you when you need it. And number two runs unnoticed in the background and is ignored as much as possible. It's valuable to think of number three and number four as dormant until they're fed. So you need to have tools to activate them and keep them running. You have to actively take charge of this process and make it a priority in your life. Number three wants to go out and play and have fun. Do something silly just for fun. Create a playlist of inspirational songs that you can sing and dance to. Collect things that make you laugh. I like to look at funny animal gifs and memes. They never fail to make me smile. Look at them several times a day. Write down jokes. Watch programs that make you laugh. Spend time happily daydreaming about your goals. Visualize positive outcomes until you can feel the happiness that's associated with achieving that result. Our number four brain is a speech center. So a good way to activate it is to use affirmations. Find some that resonate with you and say them to yourself all day long as a mantra. That helps drown out the negativity coming from your number two brain. Number four looks at things from a higher universal perspective with empathy. See the interconnectedness of all things in the universe and your place in it. Find the level where you can see that the universe is working perfectly. It's working perfectly for you right now. It always has and it always will. You are a valuable individual part of God. It's important to make these things a lifestyle change. So do them daily, even when you're not really feeling like it. Make it a routine. Do it at the same time each day, especially first thing in the morning and when you put your head on the pillow at night. But don't let it get stale. Have enough tools to use to keep it fresh. Sticking to your daily routine is vital to raising your vibrations higher and creating positive momentum. You don't get to alignment through thinking, but by feeling. You've got to feel your way there. Positive words can help trigger the better feelings. Besides feeding number three and four, you also need to stop the obsessive ruminations of negative thoughts that come from number two. Stop trying to figure things out. Stop struggling. Surrender. As I said, you don't get there by thinking. You get there by feeling it. You can't think your way to higher vibrations. You have to feel it. The spiritual seeker's path is one of joy, love, and appreciation. Momentum is the secret key that not many people talk about, but that's what we're going to address next. I welcome any positive comments, suggestions, or questions down below. A thumbs up, subscribe are always welcome. Please keep watching. We have a lot more to discuss.